My mom's a single mom. She had me at 20 years old and it was very, very hard for her. And because my brother and I have such a huge um, age gap, of course I put the mom hat on because my mom needed me to be strong for her. And uh, I mean, that's just, you know, what happened. I, I felt like a motherly thing. It's kind of funny with my brother, I kind of switch between these roles of being his mom and then being the sister where I'm like, you're annoying the fuck out of me. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you got, I, that makes total sense. Right, I flip flop. Uh, I mean, terrorizing is maybe an extreme way to put it. Maybe I'm downplaying it. It was... Because well, it was the normal to you. Right. Yeah. Great point. Yes, it was the normal to me. What's your relationship with your mom like now? My mom and I are best, best friends. See, that's so cool later in life. It must be hard to have a baby at 20, but then later in life, that yeah. is amazing that you guys are 20 years apart. It is. You know, it's amazing. It's also, though, uh, just like how I do with my brother, my mom and I will flip flop roles. Like she'll come to me and be like, I'm dating a guy. Like, what do I do? So then I'm the mom again with her and we kind of like interchangeably do that for each other. But I love her more than anything. And I think uh, not having a dad until I was six years old, that's when my stepdad came in. Um, that creates an environment to have an extremely strong bond with your mom. Yeah. You know, it's just you two together. And how many years apart is your brother? For me, yeah, eleven. Oh, you told me that eleven. Yes, yes. That, which is a big gap, huge. But that makes sense because your mom was twenty, and then right. that makes total sense that she's thirty-two or whatever, having a baby. Yes, yes. Okay, so I know I listened to you on Juicy Scoop, and I heard that you said that you had moved to New York and you were working at an office, mm -hmm. which I totally don't see you working at an office. Um, and like <laughs> nine to five, fucking miserable. Uh huh. Listening to podcasts. Yes. One, why did you decide to come to New York? And I would love to know just like how you even like were working in an office because that blows my mind. So I think that uh, when I was in high school and I hate saying this, but it's the truth. I dated this guy. He was in a grade older than me. He was like this super hot, rich, cool guy. And I was infatuated, obsessed. And, you know, he kind of was like, you need to go to college, I remember. And I was like, really? Why? <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, I, I, that's literally how I was thinking, you know? I never, I, was, I wasn't that ambitious. And he was like, you need to go to college. And like, these are the things you need to do. And so, um, you know, I take that back. I, I have been ambitious. My mom has b been the breadwinner always. Every marriage she's had, she's gonna fucking kill me for saying that. It's not that many. Um, <laughs> she's always made the money. She's always brought home the money. So yes, I was raised thinking you are in this by yourself. Okay. Also, I was raised to not trust men. I, I was raised to not think they're dependable. You know, my dad was absent. My stepdad had a substance abuse issue. So um, anyways, I, in high school, he kind of told me like college and this and that. And so then I really started taking it seriously. And when I went to college, I was a very talented writer. Uh, in all my English courses, I remember my AP teacher was like, Sophia, this is, you really are talented. Like you need to like go into this field. And I thought to myself, you won't make money doing that. Let's do economics. And so I forced myself to major in economics. And I fucking hate math. And do you I, wish that you, looking back? Yes. And to anyone listening, follow what you're passionate about. Because I did the opposite. And I forced myself to major in that. And where, which college are you at? University of Utah. Okay. I jumped around a few places, but that's where I graduated from. Okay. And then... I got a job at a top three finance firm and that was it. And I wanted to die every single day. It was so boring. 
but I thought to myself, that is how you will make money and that's how you can be successful. Okay, so so at what point when you're miserable every single day, do you decide I'm going to start a podcast with my friend? Was it planned out? I don't know this story. How did you even get in to your first podcast? So you don't. I mean, for me, there wasn't a day where I said, I can't take this shit anymore. I'm leaving. I wish there was that day. You, I mean, kind of, because obviously like the trajectory of my life, I'm so grateful for everything. But I worked in that job for four years and I was really, really miserable. Wow. I was four cl- years is a long time to yeah. do something you hate. I was clinically depressed. I you know, behaved and acted out in ways that I wouldn't do now. But there wasn't a moment where I was like, enough is enough. I really had convinced myself this is just the way it is. I think this that's is a lot of people. What, yes. This is what you have to do. Yeah, I think that's the majority of people. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Uh, but I, why did I move to New York? That was your question. I had always wanted to get out of Utah. I think it's important because it is such a specific culture here and bubble my entire family doesn't fit the mold they're from Argentina and from Spain my stepdad's from New Zealand like no one in my family was this Utah cookie cutter mold um so I never felt I really fit in here and my aunt because I had a single mom she was like a second mom lives in New York so you just decided I'm gonna go to New York I I went through a really really bad breakup with a boyfriend I had always wanted to go to New York but I went through a really bad breakup and then that was the catalyst to me piecing the fuck out and moving to New York so is is it simultaneously happening that you start a podcast while you're at this job you hate how does this even yes. transpire this idea were you sitting there listening to Juicy Scoop and you thought I could do that like what was going through your head when you decided that you were going to do this so all right so this is my answer is going to be twofold. I uh, needed a roommate when I was in New York. And there was a random ass girl I had met in like an Uber pool. And I said, do you know anyone? She said, yes. She put me in touch with my ex co-host. We met each other that very day. We signed a lease. We, we became best friends. We had insane chemistry. And we were approached to do a show because we were like at a bar in Austin. Actually, we were in Austin and we were being fucking hilarious. And I was talking about like, oh my God, devil penetration, like just being wild. Like on a stage or just at a dinner or like how- at, at sitting at the bar. Okay. And next thing we knew there were 30 people around us. What were you, was this Austin just for fun or was there like an we event? We were there for South by okay, Southwest, okay, okay. but for fun. Okay. But but there's people there. So you guys are in the bar talking about double penetration. All of a sudden you have 30 people around you. Uh Did you realize, Oh shit, this is like, like we're talented. No, I didn't. But my friend at the time, she, she always was planning on how do I get famous? This is like what I want to do. And so she said, let's do a YouTube channel. And we filmed one YouTube video. And then next thing we know, we're being approached to do a podcast. That is crazy. That that's, it is. that doesn't just happen. I mean, no. that's, I haven't heard a lot of stories like that. No, you, like you guys really people. When I do interviews, people will be like, "What was the epiphany when you like woke up and you felt?" I didn't. Uh, for you, no, but you had something that was like. Well, I think like, so, I can't pinpoint something in my career. It's been so it's been slow for what, me. What's so crazy about what happened oh, to both of you? Yeah, and yours was like it, it blew up. Yeah, overnight. It, it, it did insane. blow up. It, you almost went viral. Like it, what, yeah. what happened to both of you is so crazy because it's it's not like most people that get into this like they they're planning it, they're taking time, they're yeah. creating content. like it just happened and I like you kind of both just got thrown into it. You're forced you know, into a I partnership. Think, right? I think I did. I don't think she did. I think she was planning on it her entire life. I was thrown into it. I had no intention of doing something like that. 